Good day, students. How are you today? It's nice to see you again for another like amazing discussion. Today, we will be discussing our first lesson for Quarter 2 of Science 9. Quarter 2 is about chemistry. Are you excited? Great! Our lesson for this week is the quantum mechanical model of atoms. show you pictures and scrambled letters. All you need to do is to unscramble the letters to find the hidden word that pertains to the picture given. Is that clear? Let's start! Here's the first picture and scrambled letters. What do you mean? That's right, it is matter. As we all know, anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. Let us have the second picture. What is this? Correct, it is atom, the smallest unit of matter. It is the reason why it is called as the building blocks of math. How about this one? That's right. It is a nucleus that contains all the mass of the atom. Let us proceed with the next picture. What do you think it is? Correct! This is proton. Protons are the positively charged particles. Protons were discovered by Eugen Goldstein. model, atoms were small, hard particles that were all made of the same material. 
but different shapes and sizes. This piece is indivisible. Next, we have John Dalton's atomic bomb. In the early 1800s, an English chemist named John Dalton performed a number of experiments that eventually led to the acceptance of the idea of atoms. Dalton deduced that all elements are composed of atoms. Here is the atomic model proposed by John Dalton. According to his atomic model theory, all atoms of the same element are exactly alike, while atoms of different elements are different. Compounds are formed when atoms of two or more elements were joined. We also have the atomic model theory of Joseph J. Thompson or J.J. Thompson. In 1897, J.J. Thomson, an English scientist, provided the first clue that an atom is made of even smaller particles. He also introduced the idea about the negatively charged particle or the atom. J.J. Thomson proposed the plant pudding atomic model. According to his atomic model, atoms were made from positively charged substance with negatively charged electrons scattered about, like raisins in a pudding. The reason why he called his atomic model as the plum pudding atomic model. Another scientist who proposed his own atomic model was Ernest Luther, an English physicist. In 1908, Ernest Luther Ford handed work on an experiment. The reason all atoms that are positively charged particles were contained in the nucleus. In his model, you can see that all the protons were contained in the nucleus, while the electrons are scattered outside the nucleus around the atom's edge. Let us now talk about Niels Bohr's atomic model. Niels Bohr is a Danish scientist who proposed an improvement of the atomic model. He placed each electron in a specific energy level. Electron moves in definite orbits around the nucleus, much like planets circle the sun in the solar system. The reason why his atomic model was also called as the planetary atomic model. These orbits or energy levels are located at certain distances from the nucleus. Lastly, we have Louis Victor de Broglie and Darwin Schrodinger in their wave mechanical model of the atom. In the mid 1920s, it had become apparent that the Bohr's model was incorrect. These two scientists suggested that because light seems to have both wave and particle characteristics or behave simultaneously as a wave and as a stream of particle, the electron might also exhibit both of these characteristics. Although everyone had assumed that the electron was a tiny particle, this scientist said it might be useful to find out whether it could be described as a wave. Schrodinger carried out a mathematical analysis based on this idea. Then, he found out that it led to a new model for the hydrogen atom that seemed to apply equally well to other atoms, something Bohr's model failed to do. This model is then called as the wave mechanical model of atom. Werner Heisenberg then proposed the uncertainty principle, which states that the location and velocity of an electron is impossible to know simultaneously. In the Bohr's model, 
electron was assumed to move in circular orbits. On the other hand, in the wave mechanical model, a mathematical description of the electron called wave function or atomic orbital was introduced. It is now then called as the quantum mechanical model of atom. The quantum mechanical model of atom describes the probable location of electrons within the atom using atomic orbitals. Schrodinger's equation required the use of quantum numbers to describe each electron within an atom corresponding to their orbital size, shape, and orientation in space. Let us now discuss the quantum numbers and orbitals. The first quantum number is the principal quantum number represented by small letter M. It describes the size and energy of the orbital and relative distance to the nucleus. This is why it is also called as the principal energy level. The possible values of n are positive integers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Take note, the smaller the value of n, the lower the energy and the closer the orbital to the nucleus. The principal quantum number is also referred to as the shell the electron device. Energy levels of the atoms correspond to the rows of the periodic table of elements. Meaning to say, elements in the same row have the same energy level. For example, elements in the row 4 of the periodic table of elements have 4 shells. Each shell contains one or more subshells or sublevels, and each subshell have one or more orbitals. The next quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number, designated as a small letter F. It describes the shape of the orbitals. Its value is related to the principal quantum number and has a log value of 0 to n minus 1. For example, if we have 4 as the value of n, then, the possible values of L would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Remember class, if L is equal to 0, then the orbital is called S orbital and has a spherical shape. If L is equal to 1, the orbital is called P orbital and has our glass or dumbbell shape. If L is equal to 2, the orbital is called D orbital and has a clover leaf shape. If L is equal to 3, the orbital is called as the F orbital and has a complex shape. This is how the orbitals and their shape look like. Let us now proceed with the third quantum number, which is the magnetic quantum number. Represented as small letter M sub M. It describes the orientation of the orbital around the nucleus. The possible values of M sub L depends upon the value of L quantum number. The allowed values of M sub L are negative L through 0 to positive L. For example, if we have L equals 3, the possible values of M sub L are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is why, for example, if we have L equals 1, a P orbital, there are 3 P orbital sublevels corresponding to M sub L values of negative 1, 0, and positive 1. The fourth quantum number is the spin quantum number represented by small letter M sub S and it indicates
is the direction the electron is spinning. There are only two possible values for spin quantum number, which are the positive one half and the negative one half. When two electrons are to occupy the same orbital, then one must have an m sub s equal to positive one half and the other one must have an m sub s equal to negative one half. These are spin paired electrons. Let us try to assign the four quantum numbers by having an activity. Let us have an example on how to assign the four quantum numbers for an electron. Question number one. If an element sits on the fifth row of the periodic table of elements, what is its principal quantum number or n? The answer is n is equal to 5 since the energy level of atoms correspond to the rows of periodic table of the elements Elements on P pro have five shells the electron occupies. Question number two. If n is equal to five, what are the possible values of L? The possible values of L are zero, one, two, three, and four. Since L can be 0 or a positive integer less than n minus 1. Question number 3. If n is equal to 5 and L is equal to 3, then what are the possible values of m sub L? The possible values of m sub L would be negative 3, negative 2, Negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, and positive 3. Since m sub l must range from negative n to positive l. It also indicates that there are 7 orbitals available for electrons in the f sub level or f orbital. Question number 4. If n is equal to 5, l is equal to 3, and m sub l is equal to 0, what are the possible combinations of all four quantum numbers? Since there are two possible values for m sub s, there are two possible combinations of quantum numbers for this set and these are First, we have n is equal to 5, l is equal to 3, m sub l is equal to 0, and m sub s is equal to positive 1 half. And second set would be n is equal to 5, l is equal to 3, m sub l is equal to 0, and m sub s is equal to negative 1 half. Let us now discuss the electron configuration. Quantum mechanics believes to determine the arrangement of the electrons within an atom if two specific principles are applied. The Pauli exclusion principle and the Apgau principle. The Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of the four quantum numbers. For example, if an electron has the following set of quantum number n is equal to 2, l is equal to 2, m sub l is equal to 0, and m sub s is equal to positive 1 half, then no other electron in that atom may have the same set. Therefore, we can say that the Pauli exclusion principle limits all orbitals to only two electrons. The Apgau principle, on the other hand, describes the order in which the electrons 
enter the different orbitals in sublevels. The arrangement of electrons builds up from the lowest energy level. The most stable arrangement of electrons has all the electrons with the lowest possible energy. This lowest energy arrangement is the ground state. Less stable or the higher energy arrangements are the excited states. An atom may have any number of excited arrangements but there is only one ground state. There are several ways of indicating the arrangement of the electrons in an atom. The most common way is the electron configuration. Any S subshell can hold a maximum of 2 electrons. P subshell can hold up to 6 electrons. Any D subshell can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. And F subshell can hold up to 14 electrons. Let's take a look with this figure. This figure shows the one way of remembering the pattern for filling the atomic orbitals. The filling begins at the top of the pattern and follows the first arrow. When you reach at the end of the first arrow, you go to the second arrow and follow it to the end. The third arrow continues the pattern. Also represent the electron configuration by using a box diagram in which orbitals are represented by boxes grouped by sublevel with small arrows indicating the electrons. The S orbital is represented as one box with maximum of two electrons. The P orbital having three boxes with maximum of 6 electrons. The D orbital having 5 boxes with maximum of 10 electrons. And the F orbital having 7 boxes with maximum of 14 electrons. In applying electrons to the boxes using the arrows, you must first complete the upward arrows for all the boxes before applying the remaining downward arrows. Let's have an example. For hydrogen, the electron configuration and box diagram are Arrow represents an electron spinning in a particular direction. The next element is helium. It has two protons in its nucleus and so has two electrons. Because the 1s orbital is the most desirable, both electrons go there but with opposite spins. For helium, the electron configuration and box diagram are For fluorine, the electron configuration and box diagram with 9 electrons are That ends our discussion on lesson 1 for quarter 2 in science 9. I hope you learned a lot from this discussion. See you again on our amazing